were setting up this question, it's almost like I could hear him say, this is why I wanted her to interview you. The fact that you're going to ask me a question to say, where does your confidence come from? Where does your self-esteem come from? It should, it, it's exactly why I need to do this interview. I had none up until I got baptized in January of 2020. And a lot of people don't know that. The, the advice I give to people is do it afraid. Do it afraid because a lot of people out there who you think have that confidence and who you think have that self-esteem is simply out there just trying to to make it just like you and they're trying to push through through it and then everybody else is looking at them like oh my god she's so confident and she saw this and she saw that that's not me I go on stage and do what I have to do. Every single time I go on stage, I'm in my mind saying, all right, just go up there and do what you have to do and get off. And then people see me go on stage and I do it. And then I get off and people don't know that I go behind stage and smear. <sighs> that is literally me. My job at JMEA, which, which was the most prominent job that people know me, I would have never applied for that job because I did not think I could ever get a job like that. So I always applying to some little mega job, like some customer service rep or some things like that. And I, I, people telling me that I'm better than this, but, but me never know that. And what happened was that I submitted my resume to a friend of mine at UI, and she was the one who put in the application. And when I got the call, I'm just like, huh, me? <laughs> I'm just like, I've never done marketing in my life. I have ne I don't know nothing about marketing. So how am I going to do a marketing job? And you'd never, I was, I was so like, I had such low self-esteem. You'd never get me to apply to things that I didn't think I could get. In the interview, Crystal, I asked them, why would you hire somebody who don't even qualify for this job? Like, why didn't you go for people who had marketing and PR degrees? And my boss said to me, in the interview, she said to me that um, we find that a lot of these marketing people can chat, but they can't write. And what a people, lot of people don't know is that marketing and PR has to do with, um, has to do both. I got the job now, I confirmed that I can write. That's one thing with me, I could write. I wasn't the best of it. I wasn't the best at it at the time because I learned a lot on the job. But afterwards, what she told me, Krista, was you can teach somebody skills, but you can't teach people personality. And you have personality. <laughs> and that's how I got that job. And when I went, it was hard. <laughs> that job was hard because I was so lost. I was so... I, I within myself I always thought oh my gosh I'm going to get fired tomorrow so it was hard for me every day but I showed up every day and I did whatever was placed in front of me I learned it and I did it and I left that job with so many job offers I had to turn down job after after job offer people know me name now everywhere I'm getting I'm getting all kind of recognition and even now people are letting me know that that I I did really well and while I was in it in a crystal that's the funny thing while I was in it I thought I was failing miserably <laughs> and it's after I left and really look back I really saw the work I did and I'm just like darn Vicky you did that <laughs> A lot of people get up and say, have confidence, just have confidence. But this is not something you can just get up and put on. It is something you have to kind of journey to. And it's going to be your own breakthrough. What I advise people to do is find it. If you, it, For me, it was through finding God. That's the way I would advise everybody to find it. But that's not the way everybody going to find it. Um, some people need to speak to somebody. If you think you are being you are you feel like you're droning in low self-esteem get the courage to go and speak to somebody and and find your way out of that but when it comes to achieving goals 
when it comes to doing things like um, being, um, working, being somebody who is outstanding at work or it's outstanding at anything you put your hand to and you feel that fear, my advice to you is do it afraid. Pray about it. Make sure God's hand is in it. And then do it afraid. A lot of people see people come out there and they had a big speeches and they, they're doing all of these interviews and they don't know that behind the scenes, I had to be the one staying up all night, making speaking points for these people to make them sound awesome. And they're the ones calling me as a Vicky. You're sure I should do this? you sure I should do this? Some of our biggest CEOs, some of our biggest, biggest orators in our country, in the world, who oh, behind the scenes, they are, they are just as nervous as we are. They're just as, as afraid of embarrassment as we are. They have to hold somebody hand and say a little prayer so they can calm down. And then they go on screen and then mash it up when you think, oh my gosh, I have low self-esteem. I can't do what Crystal does. I can't do what Michelle Obama does. I can't you be surprised. Michelle Obama herself the other day um, admitted that she is suffering from um, low grade, um, I don't know if it's depression or low self-esteem herself. And I was so shocked. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, look at this. And I was, um, and after I got over my shock, I was so proud of her to say this because people need to hear it, that the people who you think are out there doing all of these wonderful things because they have confidence or because they have high self-esteem. A lot of them don't. So what's stopping you? That's what you need to ask yourself. Look in the mirror and say, what's stopping me? Who is afraid? What would be your advice now for those out there who are afraid of standing alone, of standing out, of being different, or just to speak up and to use their own voice? If you see identical twins, they're born, they're just born and they're, they're identical. And then you wonder how their own mother, their own parents are able to identify them. It's because if you spend time with them, eventually see that they're different. Even as babies, they're different. And as they grow, they will grow into their own persons, no matter if they're subjected to the same teachings to the same parents to the same school they grow to be different and that says that no matter who you are everyone is created to be different everyone God formed us the Bible speaks of he knows who you were from you were in the womb he he, he individually took us and put, added things to us not for us to to be born and uh, come out and decide to be like everybody else because you see them succeeding in this way or you see them getting attention in, in this way, then you're going to miss your blessing because the Bible speaks of, in Ephesians, the Bible speaks of um, we are God's work and we were called according to his, his purpose to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us. And he is basically saying he created each of us for a list of particular works. And if we're busy getting lost in being something we weren't meant to be, then we're going to miss it. So if you don't decide to be bold, and if you don't decide to be different and to stand in your truth, then you will miss the blessing that you were born to attain embrace who you are learn who you are in god and focus on that and watch god work in your life my guiding philosophy right now is romans 8 verse 28 all things work together for good to those who love god for those who are called according to his purpose. If I had another saying that spoke to, you mustn't pay attention to how far you have to go, but appreciate or how far you have come. Everything that I'm going through, everything that comes my way, there is going to be something good that comes out of it. Things will happen, and we tend to want to pull back because we think, oh my gosh, this, just, this is just a sign that our life is meant to be terrible. You understand? But when you can read a Bible verse like that, that says all things work together for the good. Something like COVID-19, 
and what is happening to you in COVID-19, if you could just believe that there's something that is going to come out of this, you, you, you'd be surprised how you take it on differently. Um, there's a song by Maverick City, who are like my favorite people right now, that is called The Story I'll Tell. And in the song, she's basically saying that she, she can't tell what's happening now and she, it's hard to go through it right now. But she knows that a couple years down the road, she's going to look back on this moment and she's going to see God, God's hand on it. And she's going to know he was here. My university experience was the worst three years of my life. Um, while I was in UWE, I remember my song was The Climb. Do you know that song by Miley Cyrus? It was my song. <laughs> I used to listen to that song over and over again, and it really pushed me through UWE. Um, if you enjoyed what I had to share, I'd appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up subscribe and share it with someone else who may be able to find it helpful so until next time take care keep safe and every day aim to be better to do better and to live your best life mm -hmm.